the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by independent research the most popular West Coast radio program. And remember that every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Delivery Guaranteed. The hot afternoon sun wilted his stiff collar and the sidewalk sizzled under his feet. Dark stains of perspiration blotted his gray Palm Beach suit. But Philip Linden didn't notice the heat. Tomorrow he would be 500 miles away from the city, sitting high in the cool Sierras beside a mountain stream, alone with Kathy, away from everything and everyone. They'd be able to make a fresh start. There wouldn't be that continual bickering, those hours of torture when Kathy threatened to leave him. She couldn't leave him. He wouldn't let her. The next two weeks would bring her back to him. Humming softly to himself, Philip turned down a flower-bordered path to the white stucco bungalow and fitted his key into the lock. Kathy? Kathy? Where are you, Kathy? In the bedroom. You packing? Yes. Oh, I'll come in and help you. My things won't take long. Gosh, you don't need all this stuff. We're only going to be gone two weeks. I know what I'm doing. Oh, of course you do, darling. Please, Philip, stop fawning. Sorry. Are you going to take this old trunk? Yes. But why? It's big enough to hold everything you it's own. It's mine, isn't it? Well, sure, but that's not what I meant. Please, get out of my way, Philip. I want to pack this evening gown. There's no hurry. The train doesn't leave until tonight, dear. There's plenty of time. Hand me that jacket. Yes, dear. No, 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 not that one. The one with the sequins. I'm sorry. Here it is. Do you think you'll need these formal clothes? We're only going to a mountain cabin. Oh, please don't be stupid, Philip. I'm not going on your silly little vacation. What do you mean? I mean I'm leaving you. For good. Oh, you can't. You promised you'd give me these two weeks. Don't you see it wouldn't make any difference? But I love you, Kathy. I need you. I've had four years of your kind of love, and that's enough. We never should have married in the first place. We were happy once. We will be again. Oh, stop kidding yourself, Philip. No, no, you don't mean it. Kathy always said A woman will you... say a lot of things when she's 25 and starting to wonder if she's ever going to get a husband. But you did love me. I know you did. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'll be a good boy and call the express company to pick up my trunk. I'm leaving for Reno tonight. Reno? Oh, please don't be difficult, Philip. You'll see that it's all for the best. No, Kathy, no. I won't give you a divorce. I won't. I'm leaving you whether we get a divorce or not. Now get that through your head. I'm leaving you tonight, and I'm not coming back. There's nothing you can do about it. Please don't say things like that. Give me my makeup box, Philip. Well, you can have everything, but don't leave me, The Kathy. makeup box, Philip. Well, if you come to the cabin for two weeks, things will work out. You'll see. You're just upset. I, I don't blame you, dear. It's been so terribly hot today I'm finished with this suitcase. Will you lock it? You've got to listen to reason, Kathy, darling. Don't touch me, Philip. What? What do you mean? Oh, can't you understand? I don't want you near me. I don't ever want to see you again. 
I never want to hear your sniveling voice again as long as I live. I won't let you leave me. Now, get away from that door. I want to phone the express company. I won't let you out of this room. Get out of my way, Philip. Now, get out of my way. No, I won't let you get out of this... Kathy! I'm sorry I had to slap you. Maybe now you'll stop acting like a baby. I'd rather see you dead. Philip, let go of me. Philip! Philip, don't you hurt me. You should say things I, like that to I me, can't Kathy. Please. You no, shouldn't. Philip, say no, it. no, no. I won't leave you. You shouldn't I'll say it. I'll stay. You shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't say those things to me, Kathy. You shouldn't say it. You shouldn't say those those things. Kathy, are you all right? I didn't hurt you, did I? I'll say something. Kathy, we've got to finish packing for our vacation. You're going with me. You just said you would. <laughs> I knew you didn't really plan to leave me. Kathy? Kathy? <laughs> She's dead. Kathy's dead. I've killed her. With the prologue of Delivery Guaranteed, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange tale by The Whistler. If you've done any touring throughout the West this summer, from Canada to Mexico, you've passed signal billboards that say, you now go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. But unfortunately, there isn't room on those billboards to tell the rest of the story, to tell you about the performance features in new signal gasoline that make this improved mileage possible. Here's what I mean. Science actually rearranged the atoms in gasoline molecules to give signal gasoline quicker starting, faster pickup, and quieter, higher anti-knock. And it's because of this, because it helps your motor perform more efficiently, that you now go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. Now, that's an important point to remember. It's the same qualities in gasoline that get extra driving pleasure from your motor that also get extra mileage. That's why Signal says, look to your speedometer for the best proof of gasoline quality. It takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. Philip, Kathy won't divorce you now. She can't. But she'll never come back to you. And sitting there crying won't bring her back. You didn't mean to kill her, but that won't make any difference to the police. They'll call it murder just the same. So you sit there, your head in your hands, wondering what to do. Wishing you could run away and lose yourself in the quiet green Sierras. Then it comes to you. If you had Kathy's body up in the mountains... You could drop it off a cliff. Tell them she disappeared while she was out hiking. You're standing up now, tense, the blood pounding in your temples. You're thinking now, looking at the trunk still open in the corner of the room. The trunk? It ought to be easy. I could... No, call the express company first. I'll have to leave tonight. Let's see. Electricians, engineers... Express. Here's the number. W. I. Two. One. 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 Good afternoon, Express Company. Hello. Uh, Hello, this is the Express Company. May I help you? Yes, I want to send a trunk up to a cabin in the Sierras near Silver Pine. Can you get it there all right? Oh, yes. We guarantee safe delivery anywhere. Your name and address, please. Philip Linden, L-I-N-D-E-N, at 671 Court Terrace. Court Terrace. We'll send a man over right away, Mr. Linden. Well, well, the trunk isn't quite packed yet. Well, it'll be about 20 minutes before a man can get there. Will that give you enough time? Yes. 
Yes, I'm sure it will. Yes, Philip. That will give you plenty of time. You hang up the receiver, take off your coat, and go back into the bedroom. Ten minutes later, it's done. You throw some of Kathy's clothes on top, let the cover down, snap the lock shut, and write out the shipping tag clearly so there can't be any mistake. Mr. Linden? Yes? Where from the express company? You got a trunk you want shipped? That's right, in here. Sure is a scorcher, ain't it? What? Yeah, it's really hot. Hottest day we've had this year, I guess. Oh, yes, yes, I suppose it is. This the one? Yes, be careful with it. Oh, sure, sure. You know our motto, safe delivery guaranteed. You want us to go collect? Otherwise, we've got to weigh it and come back. No, no, send it collect. Okay, where's she go? She? The trunk. Where do you want to send? Oh, the address is on the shipping tag. Okay. Now, come on, Steve, get your end. Boy, these old trunks are sure heavy. Yeah. Uh, will you open the door, Mr. Linden? Yes, of course. Boy, feel that heat hit you in the face? Uh, careful, Steve. Don't drop it. Might be something valuable inside. Well, they're driving away now, Philip. Taking Kathy with them. There's nothing more to worry about. You'll catch the 9 o'clock train to the Sierras just as you planned and arrive in time to receive the trunk and pay the collect charges tomorrow. Remember their motto, delivery guaranteed. The door. Someone's at the front door. What? Did something go wrong, Philip? Did you slip up somewhere? Did somebody see you through the window? Who sent for the police? What? What is it, officer? Well, Phil, don't you recognize me? What? Oh, Charlie, Charlie Cooper. What is this, Charlie, a joke? Didn't Kathy tell you? I'm on the force. I was sworn in the day before yesterday. Are you serious? Sure, sure, L let me show you. Right. Here it is, my identification card. Photograph and everything. Of course, I haven't arrested anybody yet, but <laughs> you'd better watch your step. <laughs> what? Oh, yes, yes. How do you like my uniform? Oh, it's fine. Fine, Charlie. You don't seem very glad to see me. Uh, aren't you going to invite me in? You're not afraid of a cop, are you? No. No, of course not. Come on inside. Well, that's more like it. You know, somebody, someday, you may be glad to have a policeman for your next-door neighbor. Why do you say that? Well, I might come in handy, fix up a parking ticket or something like that. <laughs> uh, where's Kathy? Kathy? Oh, she, she's out. Oh, I thought you two were going off on your vacation tonight. That's why I stopped in to tell you goodbye. Well, yes, yes. We are leaving. Uh, Kathy's gone downtown to do some last-minute shopping. She's meeting me at the depot. Oh, I'm sorry to have missed her. Uh, what time's your train leave? Nine o'clock. Oh, fine. I'm on duty then. I'll drop over and see you all. No, no, don't do that. Why, don't you want me? Well, yes, of course, Charlie. Only, I don't want you to get into any trouble. And... Well, if, if you're on duty, would your superiors approve? I mean, you're new on the job and all that? Well, I guess you're right. The depot's not really on my beat anyway. Say goodbye to Kathy for me, huh? Yes, I'll do that, Charlie. I'll tell her goodbye for you. And I'm glad you stopped in, Charlie. And, and it's nice that you got such a good job. Oh, I'm just an ordinary cop, but I hope to work up. You know, I'm not so dumb. One of these days, I'll stumble onto something big, and then they'll make me a detective. You'll see. Yes. I'm sure they will, Charlie. I'm sure you'll make a fine detective. Well, uh, aren't you going to answer the door? What? Oh, oh yes, the door. But it's probably a salesman. He'll go away. I'll get it on my way out. Uh, I got to run along anyway. All right. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Linden in, officer. I'm from the express company. Yeah, sure. Phil, it's for you. Okay. Well, so long, fella. Hope you and Kathy have a swell trip. Goodbye, Charlie. Did you want to see me? Yeah, Mr. Linden. That trunk of yours... What about it? It's not packed right. We hit a bump on Oak Street, and I think it's coming apart. What do you mean? Just like I say, it's coming apart. It ought to be repacked. The weight's distributed all wrong. Then it ought to be roped. 
I can't be sure to get there this way. Too much risk. All right, all right. Bring it inside. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it later. Ah, you don't want to go all that trouble yourself. We got expert packers. Only cost you two bucks more, and I do a dandy job. Take everything out and put it back in just the way it should be. It's really worth the extra money, believe me. Well, I, I want to do it myself. I couldn't... I prefer to do my own packing. Why, you can trust us. We're all bonded. It's safe to let us pack anything. Well, I, I understand, but I want to do this myself. Bring the trunk inside. Okay, but if it was me on a hot day... Bring like the trunk a... inside! Okay, you're the boss. Joe, he wants the trunk. Here, I'll help you. All right. Well, please be careful. I, I wouldn't want any... Here it is, Mr. Linden. Where do you want any it? Any place. Uh, this is your trunk, isn't it? Yes, of course. Well, you better put on a new shipping tag. I don't see the old one. I guess it came off. All right, I will. And you really ought to be more careful, Mr. Linden. Here, look here at the end. See there where that corner's cracked? I can get my finger right through the hole. Hey, want me to show you? No! Huh? Never mind. Oh, well, you see what I mean? You can almost look inside. Don't! Yeah. Don't bother, gentlemen. I'll take care of it and call you as soon as it's ready. Yes, Philip, you'll repack the trunk yourself. Wait until the expressmen leave. Ah, they're driving away now. And you're all alone, just you and Kathy. You bend over the trunk, hesitate for a moment, and then stand up sharply. The key. I don't have the key. But you can't open the trunk without a key, Philip. You can't repack it. You can't send it to Silver Pine. You've got to find the key. Kathy must have had it, yes. Look in her pocketbook. No, not on the bed. Try the dresser. Which purse did she have, green or brown, blue alligator? Wait a minute. She was wearing a coat. She always carried her keys in the pocket. Where did you put her coat? Philip, where did you put Kathy's coat? You packed it, didn't you? You packed the key inside the trunk. What are you going to do now? Break it open? No, you can't do that. You need the trunk, Philip. You've got to have it. But you could force the lock. Yes. There's a screwdriver in the kitchen. Hurry, Philip. You haven't much time. The express company will close soon. That's it. Slip the screwdriver under the catch. Someone's at the door. You better hide the screwdriver. Hey, Phil, you still here? Yes, Charlie? What do you want? My identification card. Left it on the table. Well, I'd feel awful silly if I went to work without it the first day. Yes, I guess you would. Say, I, I thought you and Kathy were only going away for two weeks. We work. We are. Why? Well, isn't that an awful big trunk for such a short vacation? Well, yes, I guess it is. But Kathy insisted on taking it. She always takes twice as much stuff as she needs. Didn't even pack it right either. The express company brought it back. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Well, she'll have to repack it. I'll just... I'll just leave it here until she comes home. Maybe that'll teach her a lesson. Oh, wait a minute, Phil. You can't do that. Why not? Well, you said she wasn't coming home. She was going to meet you at the depot, remember? Did I? Yeah. I, I guess I forgot. I... I don't know what's the matter with me. Maybe it's the heat. You sure are nervous, anyway. You really need this vacation. Yeah, you're right. Well, Charlie, it was nice of you to drop in. If you'll excuse me, I'll get my bags out. I'm going... I'm going downtown right away. Well, what about the trunk? Oh, I don't think Kathy will need it. She always takes a lot of extra stuff. She won't even miss it. I'll just leave the trunk here. Serve her right. Oh, you can't do that. She'd never forgive you. You know how women are. She's probably got a lot of important things in there. Well, Charlie, I really haven't got time to bother with it. I'm not very good at packing. Come on, I'll help you. I'm an expert packer from way back. Helen says that's why she's married me. <laughs> no, Charlie, I don't want... I don't want to take your time. Don't you have to go on duty? No, not for a couple of hours. This will only take ten minutes. Uh, where's your key? I don't know. I think Kathy's got it. Yeah, that's right. She took all the luggage keys with her. Ah. Well, I guess we'll have to let it go then. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks anyway, Charlie. What's that? A, a screwdriver. What are you carrying that around for? Well, uh... Well, I was going to pry the trunk open, but I was afraid I'd ruin the lock. Well, let me take a crack at it. Well, let it go. How about a drink, Charlie? It's, it's so warm. There's cold beer in the icebox. I... Oh, sorry, Phil. I'm on duty tonight. No alcohol. It's against the rules. Now, let's see how this lock works. Well, some, some grape juice. 
That sounds good, doesn't it? There's some in the kitchen. Come on, Al. Now, you go ahead. I, I want to work on this lock a minute. But please don't bother. I'll get the grape juice. Oh, this is an old piece of luggage. Hey, how long have you had it? I don't know. Quite a while. It was Kathy's before we were married. Don't worry about it, Charlie. Here, I, I got something to, to wet our whistle. I wish I had a bigger screwdriver. Here you are, Charlie. Not exactly champagne, but it's cold. Here, take one, Charlie. Well, I'll be darned. Phil, we're sure a couple of saps. What? The trunk isn't even locked. See? All you have to do is push this little button and drop the hasp like this, flip these catches, and lift the lid right up. No! Holy mackerel, what's the matter with you, Phil? The tray slipped. My hands were wet, see? You ought to be more careful. You spilled grape juice all over these clothes. We've got to hurry and get them out. Everything will be stained. Don't bother, Charlie. I'll do it later, Charlie. Don't be a sap, Phil. These clothes will be ruined. Here, give me, give me a hand. Charlie, I, I didn't mean to do it. it. It was an accident. I know. Anybody can drop a tray. Here, get this dress. But you don't understand. It wasn't my fault. I know, I know. No, but, but I'm trying to tell you... Take these rugs, will you? Rugs? Let's see. What's all this? Sweaters? Socks? Here's a coat. You never saw so much junk. Look at all these things. Just old clothes. Clothes? Yeah. Well, don't just stand there. Help me get this stuff out. It's your job, you is know. Is that all there is? Clothes? Yeah, yeah. I just struck bottom. Everything's <laughs> unpacked. <laughs> Nothing but old clothes? Well, what did you expect to find? Yes, Philip. It wasn't exactly what you expected, was it? Kathy's gone. You put her in the trunk. You know you did, and now she's gone. Where could she be? It doesn't matter. You're safe for a while. At least Charlie doesn't know what you've done. Of course, it could all be a mistake. They may have brought the wrong trunk back. Then you wouldn't have anything to worry about unless they delivered your trunk to another address. Charlie, this isn't my trunk. Well, you said it was. I know. I was wrong. It looks the same. But those aren't Kathy's things. I can tell. That isn't... What was packed in the trunk at all? Well, why didn't you say so before? I got this stuff spread all over the floor. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't sure. I'd better go right down to the express company and see them. Nonsense. It's their mistake. Just call them on the phone and tell them to come and get this one. Yes. That's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. I'll call them on the phone. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll put these clothes back in. Thanks, Char... Charlie? What now? Maybe they've still got my trunk and they've mixed it up with this one. Maybe they'll deliver it to the wrong place. I ought to try and catch them. Don't be silly. Use the phone. They'll come back to the office sooner or later. Why are you so worried about an old trunk? It can't be so valuable. All right, I'll telephone. The number is right here. All right. Two. One. Good afternoon, Express Company. This is Philip Linden. You've got to help me. Yes. Linden. My trunk, I was I was shipping at the Silver Pine, you remember? Yes, haven't the men come yet? Well, they've been here all right, but they brought the trunk back. They said it had to be repacked. I see. Do you want us to pick it up now? No. I mean, yes. I mean, it isn't my trunk. They sent back the wrong one. Oh, that's odd. They, they don't usually make mistakes. Um, what kind of a trunk was it, Mr. Linden? It was an old-fashioned wardroom style. It was black with brass fittings. Just a moment. The truck's driving in now. I'll ask the boy. All right, thank you. Have they got your trunk down there, Phil? I don't know. They're looking for it now. They've got to find it, Charlie. They've got to find it. Don't get so excited, Phil. It's not a matter of life and death. Hello, Mr. Linden. Yes, hello. Yes, we do have another trunk here that answers that description exactly. They picked up two of them out your way. <laughs> well, that must be mine, then. They got them confused, that's all. Well, I'm sure it is. But sure. the shipping tag on this one's been lost. We'll have to check the contents to be absolutely certain. Don't do that. Be besides, it's locked. You can't look in it. We have master keys here from all the trunk companies. It'll take just a minute. No trouble. Please don't trouble. No, it's no trouble at all. Steve, open up that trunk, will you? The man's waiting on the phone. He'll have it open in a moment, sir. Now, for identification purposes, would you please describe some of the contents? Did they find your trunk, Phil? Yes. They did. Charlie. There's something I better tell you. They'll know anyway, as soon as they open the trunk. Kathy's dead, Charlie. I killed her. The 
Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Hear that? Just a sound effect. But in your imagination, didn't you picture a cat meowing? All right, now try this one on your imagination. See if you can picture in your mind the trademark of my sponsor, your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer. I'll give you two seconds. <laughs> you were right if you visualized a big circle sign with yellow letters on a black background spelling out the word signal gasoline. And in the center, a traffic signal. Which is why we say let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Incidentally, wherever you see that signal sign, there you will also find that great new signal premium motor oil that keeps motors six times cleaner, reduces cylinder wear one-third, and by no means least, conscientious signal service by experienced dealers who are more eager to please you because they're in business for themselves. Added up, that's just today's best recipe for longer car life. So let signal's yellow and black circle sign be your signal for the surer protection your car needs today to help it run better and last longer. And now back to the whistler. Well, Philip, it's all over now. Charlie made his first arrest, and it was a big one, wasn't it? You knew there was no point in trying any longer. The minute they opened the trunk at the express office, there would be the first terrible moment of discovery, the hue and cry, the police alarms, and you couldn't face it. It was much easier to hang up the telephone and tell it all to Charlie calmly and quietly. So Charlie made his first arrest, and he'll probably get a promotion. Of course, he had nothing to do with it, really. It was the express company and that nice girl clerk you talked to on the telephone. Hello? Hello? Oh, gosh, Stevie's hung up. Well, what'll I do now? How should I know? Well, I don't know either. <laughs> Nothing like this has ever happened before. Well, think of something. Don't oh, get so excited, Betty. He said he didn't want us to open the trunk. You know how people are about their private property. And then he got mad and hung up, or well, he'll probably complain to the boss. Well, we didn't open it, did we? I found the shipping tag on the bottom. We didn't have to open it. Yes, but what'll we do? Send that trunk on up to Silver Pine. But he got so excited, there, there must be something valuable in it. So it's valuable. It's addressed to Silver Pine. That's where he wants it to go. We've got to send it. You know our motto. Delivery guaranteed. Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. Featured in tonight's program were Elliot Lewis and Lorene Tuttle. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Robert Libet and Frank C. Burt, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. That whistle is your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular signal oil stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>